In the closet today, we're here with Colette Bromhead in her, should we call it a studio? Yeah, studio? yeah that sounds and great. next piece of the house. Yeah. Yeah. And Colette is a home sewer. And we were having a little chat before, a colleague's also a scientist, and we were having a little chat before, and you raised a really interesting thing about the comparison between fast fashion and farming. Yeah, well, um, one, one of the questions that you emailed me to think about was, um, what's my biggest concern with the fashion industry currently? And um, I guess, well, number one, there's such a lot of it. This, this, sort of avalanche of stuff out there and you know and it's in the second hand stores and it's in the Salvation Army shops and it's in the clothing bins and then it's sort of coming out the edges of the stores and um, and then there's the, the people that are producing it are, are akin to farm animals almost some of the the fast fashion uh, is being produced in a farm like manner um, without much regard for uh, the quality of the human life that is behind the production without regard for the environmental impact and the constant need to grow and grow and grow both economically and to keep filling our closets is just, you know, it's an oxymoron, <laughs> really. Um, and I think if we had uh, a look in behind the scenes of what went on, um, we would have the same concerns for the people as we do for some of the farm animals and some of, you know, the racehorses that have been retired and uh, and, and the various other things that the covers have been lifted on. Yeah, yeah. And I've never thought about that comparison before. Obviously, the start of, of a, a large percentage of the clothing industry is farming, the, the cotton farming, the linen farming, the, you know, it, 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 it is an agrarian supply chain, well, the beginning of it. But then to consider how the people within that are treated, you're absolutely right. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's, it's, it's kind of a terrifying thought. And um, when I started to sew clothes and I realised how much time and energy it takes to produce a T-shirt and I'm exhausted at the end of it and it doesn't even look that great yeah. <laughs> compared to what these amazing people produce for next to nothing, you know, it really uh, shudders your soul. Yeah, the skills, the high level of skill yeah, in they're making amazing. a garment and then the no, patterns. No, yeah, absolutely yeah. no remuneration for it. Yeah. The other thing that I'm struggling with at the moment is about, so the, the amount of water it takes to make a kilo of cotton, 20,000 litres, mm. um, which is a vast amount of water, and then if you're producing that cotton in a region that is water deprived, yes. and so people are having to, are being displaced because of that water deprivation, but is, that that a, is that ethical, yeah, mm -hmm. is that ethical production of people's lives are impacted to that extent, well, even if it is like water Obviously deprived. not. Yeah. And uh, so if, if your t-shirt came with a, a uh, label in it that said, you know, five families were displaced um, so that you you could have this garment. How would you feel about it then? Yeah. Right. Well, this this is an example of my my kind of secondhand buying philosophy, which is I try and buy designer yep. and good quality fabrics. So natural fabrics, silks, and you know um, maybe man-made utensils and things that are really nice and easy to recycle, good for the environment, etc. And so um, this is a, a Marks um, jacket that's made of tinsel, and this is a, a Trelise Cooper dress that silk. is silk. And I just love the print, actually. It felt like Beautiful I was kind of colors. lost in Cuba somewhere. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and um, it, um, it wasn't a great fit on me because the shoulders just want to do that all the time. So this um, mannequin is to your It's pretty size. It's pretty sort of similar -ish. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's not totally bespoke, but close. And um, and also it's it's got some rips under the arm because it's it's clearly been well loved etc. Which is you know kind of a oh the sleeve there yeah just under the sleeve there yeah. it's got a tear um, but it has a, a zip all the way down the back which actually goes down into the skirt area so what I was going to do was actually um, pick um, the whole zip and deconstruct the top part of the bodice and use that fabric to turn into a waistband 
so that I could still have a skirt from the main piece of fabric, which is the largest part of the dress. Mm. And then I can still team it with the jacket, which you know isn't a trilise jacket, but the colours go with it. And voila, an outfit for twenty dollars. Right. So the jacket you don't need. Oh, so how much did the dress cost? Uh, the dress was ten, and the jacket was ten. Although I did get the jacket dry cleaned because it had some marks on it, but they came out at the dry cleaner and it was like new. So. Brilliant. Yeah. And where did you get them from? Um, I got them from the Kauri School Fair actually, oh, so okay. the gala is a great place to go, they have a, a designer store yeah. and um, and sometimes actually you pick them up and they've got you know a button missing or a little hole or something and because I'm a sewer I can fix that and I can envision or I can you know remake it into something cool and it's, it's all, all about the fabric for me, Yeah. the quality of the fabric, the beauty of the fabric because I mean I know what fabric costs and you know as long as the cost of the garment means that you know I couldn't actually make it for that yeah. then that's brilliant it's good value and it's it's a wonderful way to reuse it so do you get all your clothes second hand no I'm probably um, I had a thought about this before and I think I'm probably about 50% um, me made so yeah. wow so I buy um, fabric and um, I have quite an obsession with patterns as you can see here um, <laughs> So I've currently got an obsession with uh, closet case patterns. I also very much like merchant and mills patterns. And uh, this is a designer from Dunedin, Jennifer Lauren, who makes vintage patterns. Oh. And um, this is a, a shirt dress she just came out with, the sorrel dress. And so I was very excited to get that one the other day. And I get my um, patterns mainly from Miss Maud, who's in Greytown. Right. Yeah. So, so you order them online? I order them online. And um, when I'm treating myself, I'll buy printed patterns. Yeah. And when when I'm um, you know budget constrained, I'll buy PDFs, and then yeah. you have to print them out and put them together. Which this is an example here of pasting oh, together. Oh right. Yeah. So you print them out as A4, and you cut the edges off, and then it's kind of pattern Tetris, and you put the pages together and glue them, and then you have a pattern. And I usually trace them off using. Um, this kind of uh, see-through tracing paper. Yep. So I'll trace off my size, and sometimes I'll grade between sizes because you know my hips are bigger than my waist, and mm. so I'm never one size. But I mean that's the joy of making your own clothes: is the ability to get things that fit you perfectly and perfectly. Yeah, this you right. can't get so easily uh, and ready-made. Yeah, but um, I will buy about twenty percent ready-made and about twenty percent second-hand. Um, and I'll usually aim for high-end designer stuff that you know would have been really expensive to start with, but they use good quality fabrics, good quality finishes, and um, you know it's really special. Yeah. So you are you lean towards natural fabrics like cotton, linen, silk, that, that's all the merino wool um, things that can be composted or will degrade easily. Yeah. Um, and I enjoy sewing with those. I found once I started sewing, which um, was probably about five years ago, um, it was in response to my son, um, who's now nine. He was, he was very tall for his age, but very skinny. So all of the pants that you bought, they could, if they were long enough for him, they'd fall down. Oh, so my going, son the same. <laughs> yeah. So my son was going around mooning everyone in Karori. And uh, this was not to be had, and so I thought, right, I'm going to sew pants that are, you know, size 7 in the leg, but size 3 in the waist. Yeah. And, um, you know, they were very simple, elasticated waist pants to start with. Yeah. And um, so I sewed up a storm of these these little pants, and, and I got an overlocker, which was a, a big um, step forward, because then I could sew knits. So I could sew little yeah. track pants and things like that. Yeah. And um, and then I thought, hmm, why am I just sewing for the child? I want to sew for me. Yeah. Ah, I can, if I can sew things for him that fit, I can sew things for me that fit. And so actually, here's an example of one I'm wearing now, um, which uh, this is the Deer and Doe Sirocco jumpsuit. Yeah. Which is made in a, a ponte fabric, which I got from Potter & Co from Australia. And so it's got two-way stretch and... I don't know what it is about this pattern, but pretty much everyone I've seen on Instagram and it looks, you know, kind of fabulous. Yeah. And you're just in it and you're instantly dressed. Yeah. <laughs> so, so it's really great. And um, and I really didn't have to make any changes to the pattern. Something about their and Doe's patterns, uh, I don't know, they, they fit me, so that's great. So I'm just going to keep using the patterns. Yeah, brilliant. Brilliant. Yeah. So what is the fabric? 
Um, this is a Ponte Mint, um, Ponte Roma it's sometimes called. So oh, it's that's a raw edge. That's correct, yeah. So it doesn't, it, uh, it doesn't, doesn't fray. It doesn't fray. And I like the length of it, so I thought I'm just going to leave it. Yeah. I, I did do the, I did do a hem on the bottom. I'm not totally useless. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> My mother, who was a, who was a sewer and a fashion maker, we did something like that. She just we want to be barely out to leave the house. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But you'd never know that it was a raw edge. No, no. It um. That's why I thought, okay, this is cool. And also, I was dying to wear it after I made it, and I was like, oh, I'm just gonna. No time for hemming. <laughs> I'm leaving the house. I'm going to go out and I feel fabulous. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Yeah. <laughs> really nice. Yeah, thank you. And, that, um, and that's, with our boys, I had the same with my son, who's now a grown man, but he was saying he was really narrow hipped. Yeah. Kind of European build. And so getting clothes for him in New Zealand, if they fitted him in the body, they were way too wide. And, so, yeah, yeah, and they come with quite often with these um, elastic in the waist with, with the buttons. Yeah. But you know, by the time you pulled it into fit, it looks, you know, they get this sort of big crunchy Lunchy. thing. And I know paper yeah. bag waists are in, but this is ridiculous. Yeah. And they, they just look silly and, and they feel silly. And um, now he's nine, I have to say, he's like the idea of wearing, you know, boxer shorts that his mother has made, really uncool. So... I have to say, the sewing for the sun has gone slightly out the window yeah. for a period. I'm hoping he might, you know, find that cool again one day, but not for now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Very good. Hey, um, yeah. I was looking at your My favorite, favorite stash, stash yes. and for me, one that do have fabric stashes, often yes. the beauty fabric of them stashes. is just to look at them yes. and admire them and yes. stroke them. Yeah, I particularly like striking the velvets. This, this is a... Remnant I got oh, from the fabric color. store, silk viscose. Rain is the colour and rain is the day. Um, yeah. yeah, and, and oh, I, I like sitting there and, and looking at um, patterns and imagining what things will look like if they're made in different fabrics. And so there's actually quite a lot of you know dream time and, and thinking yeah. and creativity. And, yeah. yeah, and and I have to say with an intensive um, science job. This is a complete different side of my brain that I get to use after hours, which relaxes the other side. Nice. So it's a real balance. And yeah. I've actually found a number of people with PhDs who work in science who sew. And I think the, 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 there's a thing to it out, out there, actually. People oh, who do technical jobs really are gravitating to uh, creativity as they need it for relaxation. I'm not a particularly great sewer. Um, I don't have a very good ability at seeing things from 2D and 3D. Yeah. So I, find, I really struggle when, when people say, just drape it. And I'm like, mm. <laughs> <laughs> but what do you mean? <laughs> and, yeah. and, and, and I find, uh, you know, people who are naturally creative, there's quite a high percentage of people who have dyslexia in those groups quite often. And I think dyslexia is a superpower. Because it gives people the ability to model things in their head in 3D that I am just a total failure at. Oh, I never thought of that. Yeah, no, it is a it is an absolute superpower. And I know from, um, because I, I'm lucky enough to work at Massey University and we have this fantastic College of Creative Arts, some of those people are just amazing what they can do and what they can do with fabric. So, you know, I'm not a really good sewer or anything, but some people out there are just, just fantastic. So really I'm just doing it because... You know, I like things that fit. I like beautiful things. I refuse to pay $1,000 for a dress. And, um, you know, and I need it to relax me. Wow. In a nutshell. <laughs> um, so this is your velvet? Yes, this is my and velvet. Were, set, well, are they set, set by fabric types? So, sort of. So there's a, there's a knits area in here, and I've got some merinos, and I've got some um, viscose rib knits. This piece of linen that escaped in there, I have to say. Patterns. That's a 27 names uh, remnant. So, I mean, of the designers that I really like and really love to go and finger things and wait for them to come on sale occasionally, 27 names, I really love their clothes. There's just something about the aesthetic of their design, the fit, which just <gasps> makes my heart sing. And they are actually Karori girls. Yeah. And they're and based in Wellington. And their choices are really, really joyful. And... They are just gorgeous. Yeah. 
yeah oh, I just yeah so I, I love 27 names so if I do treat myself and splurge and buy something new it'll be 27 names or it'll be um koto right um, yeah because it's organic it's it's certified it's you know we know that there's a chain of sustainability and responsibility and that people aren't treated badly in the process of making that garment there are no zips in any of their um, garments because no one can produce a zip that is sustainable yeah so it's all buttons and the buttons are beautiful that's Koto. Koto. I was yeah. going to ask if you yeah. <laughs> that was Koto. Yeah. Um, I don't buy a lot new, but yeah. And yeah. I bought this recently for a conference Yeah. Um, on waste management, actually. Um, but yeah, yeah that's, right. that's no, no zips and just, it's just thoughtful construction and beautiful fabric and totally ethical supply chain. So much thought. And mindfulness has gone into their business. It, absolutely, and, mm. I, and I love to support that. So yeah. if I am buying new, that's that's where I'll go. And in fact, um, you can get occasionally. Um, so the fabric store, um, which are throughout New Zealand and Australia, and they were in LA briefly, and they sell online, actually get dead stock koto fabric. Ah. So this is organic. Um, cotton from which was originally Koto because I know because I bought a t-shirt in it from them all oh, right and and I yeah. got the matching ribbing um, to go with it so I'll actually be able to make dresses and t-shirts I've got like about four meters of it there yeah um, in the lovely organic cotton that they have so lovingly created so if someone wants to go and get dead, well, we call it dead stock, yeah, which dead is not stock. a good not, term, not but, a lovely term, but yeah, it's fabric that's um, stuff. yeah unused by the by a um, fashion brand or brand. Um, so it's new but un, unused. And um, if someone wants to go there, if someone wants to use that, where would they go to find it? Um, so yeah, the fabric store um, in well in Wellington, they're in Garrett Street or they're online um, as well. Yeah. And um, they usually don't tell you that it's Koto or X. Right. They'll just, you know, you just have to kind of know. Or sometimes they'll say it's X New York designer or something like right. that. Right. Yeah. Um, and uh, it was just that I happened to have a T-shirt and that yeah, <laughs> and yeah, knew. Right. I was like, oh my goodness, it's Koto. Ooh, I have to have some. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so they, they are quite sort of circumspect about it. Um, yeah, so if someone's a sewer, it's a really good way of reducing waste within that whole um, industry for it to be reused. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, it was. I made my first wool coat. And um, this was an odyssey. I had, ah. <laughs> I had to buy a, a, a whole new, um, yeah. Thanks, dude. Um, I had to buy a whole new sewing machine because my other sewing machine... Uh, wouldn't suck the skin off a rice pudding and so I bought a vintage banana right and they are so powerful yeah but in order to go through the layer upon layer upon layer of wool that you have in the big seams on woolen coats yeah. you, you need something that semi-industrial yeah so um so this ended up costing quite a lot this coat when you can't quite the machine as well. The machine as well. Right. Yeah so and I, I got the fabric from um, Miss Maud and uh, the linings from the fabric store and I actually got these little bunny buttons and um, it's actually a pattern um, from an Australian Tissuti. Right, Tissuti yeah. Fabrics yeah. also produce their patterns. Um, so I was nice and cosy in the winter. So that was that was a big step forward. And, Lovely um, um, shawl collar. Yeah, yeah, at the time it was great because you can wrap it around your neck yeah. in the cold Wellington yeah. subway. Beautiful. Um, for spring I have the uh, Wixton Hayori jacket, which is such an easy sew. Um, it's basically squares. And linen. this is a linen. This is actually a Merchant Mills linen, um, which I got from Miss Maud. And it's lined with little leopards. Little leopards. <laughs> oh, you are a cat person. I am. Sorry, shameless. <laughs> <laughs> so that's really nice and easy to throw on for a summer day. Yep. Um, this uh, particular set that I made, which these are the Tanya Kalots from Megan Nielsen, who's a Perth designer, and she's particularly into um, patterns that use up all your fabric scraps. So she's got oh, zero waste. Zero yeah. waste, yes, yeah. she's very good at that. 
So, um, sorry. So there that's eight lots. Yep. And then I had enough left to make a grain line um, willow cami to go with it. So last year when I got exported to New Caledonia to speak at a conference, where it turned out everybody only spoke French, uh, <laughs> and I don't. So that was bad. But I looked fabulous. Right. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> perfect. Um, perfect cycling wear. Yeah, Colotts in Wellington should yeah. be mandatory. Yeah. <laughs> I, I really feel this because, yeah, you, you you don't end up, you know, showing your knickers to everyone. Although, I don't know, some people seem to think that's fine. But um, I don't, and this is great because, yeah, you look like you're wearing a skirt. Because yeah, I've recently, like six months ago, bought an e-bike. And Did the, you? The, the, your yeah, transport really affects what, what you, you wear. wear. It and, really does. And you don't want to be a lycra in sports gear. You want to be You want to be able to no, ride the no bike. No offence to the people who love lycra, who are out there, who we all love. So. You, want to be able to wear, <laughs> you want to be able to wear the clothes on your bike that, that you, you can go to work. a meeting and to... And to uh, yeah. Correct. And I, um, I had to go, this is uh, Merchant and Mill's um, Hattie, oh. Hattie dress and a linen from the fabric store. And I just love the way linen is oh, just slubby and, and, you know, it always, basically it always looks unironed, even if you have ironed it for three hours. So give up, people. Don't bother ironing. <laughs> um, you're just wasting your resources. You're just wasting <laughs> So, and I love this because oh, it has, it has these, these darts that um, go into the neck rather than a bust dart. So it gives yeah. you the shaping coming into the neck. And it's just... I mean, it's just different and amazing and interesting, and I love their patterns for that. Um, so what, what's the name of the pattern? This is a Merchant and Mills pattern. It's mm -hmm. from the UK, and I, yeah, they've got a really kind of workwear aesthetic. Um, there's a particular dress that they um, have a pattern for called the Factory Dress, which first caught my eye, and, and it's actually modelled after 1950s dresses that women wore to work in factories. Right. And... I don't know, it just this looks like really nineteen twenties. Yeah. With that neckline. And it has the pockets. fabric choice. Oh, everything's better with pockets. Everything's better with pockets, yes. 